Hello friends, welcome back to Edupedia World. Today we will start a fresh chapter that is machines. Today's lecture we will focus on the uses and the definition of a machine and then we will jump into some technical terminologies which will be used throughout the chapter machine. Some of them are mechanical advantage, we will see in details what it is. We will see what velocity ratio is and we will see how to find efficiency of a machine. Let us get started with our chapter. In our day to day life, we use some devices which help us carry out our work with ease. For example, suppose you want to open a bottle of coke, you use a bottle opener, you use a bottle opener to carry out the task. What it does is it makes the task easier for you. The bottle opener provides a convenience to open the bottle. There are many more examples in our day-to-day -day life where we use simple tools to help us do a task. These simple tools can collectively co called as machines. Now what are the functions of a machine? So a machine a machine can be used to as a force multiplier what I mean is what I mean is that a machine can be used to overcome a large force by applying a small force so basically by applying a less force and using the machine as a force multiplier we are able to overcome a large force Secondly, a machine can be used to change the direction of force. Change the direction of force. There can be scenarios when it is easier to apply a force in a different direction than the direction in which the force is needed to be applied on the body. So suppose uh, force is to be applied on a body vertically up but it is convenient for us if we uh, pull it vertically down. So here there is the need to change the direction of force. How do we do it? We do it by using a pulley. We tie a rope to the thing that we need to move vertically up and uh, pass the rope through the pulley and the other end of the rope is pulled down. So basically we are changing the direction of the force. Thirdly, machine can be used to change the point of application of force. change point of application of force and finally a machine can be used as a speed multiplier speed multiplier Liar. What does this mean? Speed multiplier. What this means is that we can use a machine to gain speed. That is, we can cause larger movement of the load by applying a smaller movement for the effort. So that is what a speed multiplier is. Collectively, what we can say about a machine is that a machine is a device 
which can be either used to overcome a large force by applying a smaller force or which can be used to gain speed. Additionally, it can be used to change the direction of force or the point of application of force. Now that we know broadly what a machine is and what are its functions, let us see a few technical terms which are associated with a machine. The first important terminology is load. What is a load? A load is the resistive or opposing force which the machine has to overcome. It's the opposing force the machine overcomes. It is represented as L. Next we have effort. Effort which is represented as E is the force that is applied on the machine to overcome the load. So it is the force applied on machine to overcome load. overcome load. So basically we are applying a uh, effort on the machine which is helping it to overcome the load. Now we have something which is called as a mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage which is represented as MA for mechanical advantage and it is defined as the ratio of the load to the effort. So mechanical advantage is load upon effort. From this definition of mechanical advantage that is load upon effort, what we can see is that if the load is more than the effort, then we have a mechanical advantage greater than 1. And what does it mean? What does it mean that load is greater than effort? It means that by applying less effort, we are able to overcome a larger load. So basically what is happening is that we are getting a force multiplier. We have to apply less effort to overcome a large load. Therefore let me write it here. If it is greater than 1 then load is more than effort and it becomes a force multiplier. Force multiplier. And if we have the load by effort less than 1, then it is normally a speed multiplier. If it is less than 1, then it is a speed multiplier. And if it is equal to 1, if the mechanical advantage is equal to 1, then it is neither a force multiplier nor a speed multiplier. Rather, it is used to change the direction of force or the point of application of force. Next, uh, another important point here is that mechanical advantage is a unitless quantity because load and effort both are units of force. Both are expressed as Newton, therefore they cancel out and the mechanical advantage is a unitless property. Next, 
let us see something which is called as velocity ratio velocity ratio abbreviated as VR velocity ratio is defined as the velocity of effort velocity of effort divided by velocity of load so velocity of effort by velocity of load is velocity ratio what this means is that if the velocity of effort is more than velocity of load then the velocity ratio is greater than 1 and under such scenario velocity ratio if greater than 1 then effort moves faster than load so we are basically slowing down so it is not a speed multiplier when will it be a speed multiplier when it is less than 1 why because then the speed of the load is more than the speed of the effort so for less than 1 we get a speed multiplier else we get a force multiplier if it is more than 1 then we get a force multiplier now is there some other way to relate uh, velocity ratio actually there is see the velocity of effort and velocity of load can be represented as distance moved by effort let us call it de upon time that will give us the velocity and this whole upon distance moved by load divided by time since the time is same both for effort and load because that is occurring simultaneously or parallelly therefore these two t will cancel out and velocity ratio will become equal to the displacement by the effort upon displacement by load so velocity ratio can be defined either as the velocity of effort by velocity of load or displacement of effort upon displacement of load and we also have seen that uh, velocity ratio greater than 1 is a force multiplier similarly mechanical advantage greater than 1 is also a force multiplier and velocity ratio and mechanical advantage less than 1 are speed multipliers and when they both are equal then what we have is basically a change of direction of the force again velocity ratio like mechanical advantage is a ratio therefore this is also a unitless quantity next we have work input and work output work input is the work done by the effort on the machine so it is work done by effort on the machine then we have what is called as work output this is the work done by the machine on the load so what is happening here that work is done by the effort on the machine which is called as the work input and as a result of that the machine does a work on the load which is called as the work output then we have efficiency efficiency 
is represented by eta and efficiency is basically how effectively the machine is able to transfer the work which it is getting from the effort to the load. So efficiency is defined as the ratio of work done by the machine on the load work by machine on load to the work done by effort on the machine. Alternatively, it is the work output upon work input. So higher the efficiency of a machine, more effectively it is able to transfer the work from the effort to the load. Now efficiency, if we directly take the ratio, we get a fraction. But normally efficiency is represented in terms of percentage. So we can write efficiency as percentage equal to work output, let me represent as OUT, divided by work input into 100. That many percentage. Efficiency again is a unitless quantity since it is a ratio of two work. So it's a unitless quantity. Efficiency is a representation of how effectively the work is being transmitted. Next up, we will see the principles of a machine and the relation between efficiency mechanical advantage and velocity ratio. And we will see some examples dealing with the different terminologies that we study till now. But these will be discussed in the next lecture. Till our next lecture, have a great day. Goodbye.